idea of a basic widget. The, uh, the problem is going to be to first, we're going to draw a scatter plot of some gap minder data. And this data has information about the GDP per capita in a number of countries uh, on five continents or with five uh, over six continents. North and South America are labeled as the Americas. Um, and this is every five years from 1952 to 2007. So the way that matplotlib works is that we can't just, I can't just pass arbitrary names like the continent to get colors. And we're going to try and color the points based on this continent. So instead, what we need to do is we need to create a new column that has colors for each of the unique continents. All right. So I've chosen here some arbitrary colors. And again, I have to have these names just right. Um, and we will map this dictionary onto the continent column to create a new column of colors. So after doing, after doing that, you see like we have two countries in Oceania and so on and so on. Um, and we have this new column out here on the end of our data that contains the colors for the given countries. All right. So let's get started by just building a regular scatter plot. And we're going to do it with the GDP per cap. And we'll start with 1952 just to get going. And um, we want this against the life expectancy. And OK, not a very interesting looking plot, but this is due to a certain kind of relationship, and also there's some crazy outlier out here. So there's actually a mathematical operation when we see a plot like this that we can try to get things straightened out. And that's gonna that's called a log transform. And we can use NumPy to, to try and implement this. So I'm gonna say np.log, and we'll try it around x. And you know, that looks much better. Okay. Now it's, it seems that there's a relationship here between uh, wealth and health. So the next step is to color these points based on the continent. And we can just use, if you look, if we look at the scatter plots help, there's uh, an argument C that stands for color. And this is expects an array like list of colors. Again, like this is a sequence of colors. So you can do just like we have uh, just like we have here, but we're gonna add one more argument for C. And there we go. All right, now it doesn't look that great at the moment. But we can do a little bit more work to make it look better. Um, one more layer of information that we want to incorporate is the population. So in addition to our color argument, we are also going to use this S argument that stands for size. And that is a number that uh, determines what the size of the point is. So we're going to base that on the population. So we'll say S equals DF pop, and it will be in 1952. OK, it's all purple. That's because these are big numbers. So we'll divide it by something like um, 100,000. And that looks a bit better. One of the other things that we see, though, is that we have these very big points that don't um, that one are kind of coming off the screen a little bit, off the plot a little bit, but also are covering a number of other points. So, in addition to these kind of elements based on the data, we can style the graph a little bit by making the points transparent using the alpha argument. So we'll set alpha to 0.3, and we'll outline the markers with black edges and um, 
let's add a title. GDP versus life expectancy in 1952. We're going to add some space to the X. All right, we'll say that this can go from maybe four to 12, just based on what we see here. And we'll let Y go from uh, 20 to 80. Let's see how that looks. Okay, that looks a bit better. And let's also add a grid here. Nice. And maybe one last thing are the labels. There we go. All right, looking uh, looking pretty good. Maybe, maybe it's looking good. The next thing that we want to do is try and make this interactive because we have data from more than 1952. So that's going to be our next step.